the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. My name is Father John Ramsey. I'm with uh, St. Mark's Coptic Orthodox Church in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I was asked to speak to you about church history, especially pertaining to the doctrine of the church and how it evolved through the centuries and how, because of that evolution of doctrine, many denominations were formed, schisms happened, even though in the beginning the church was one. Our Lord Jesus Christ came and was made flesh, became a man in order to save mankind from sin. And in order for that good news to propagate, he established his church through his apostles and their disciples thereafter. In the beginning, the church was one. The church was persecuted by many. It was persecuted by the Jews in Israel, Palestine. It was also persecuted by the Roman Empire. And in other centuries thereafter, it was persecuted by other people also, not just the Jews and the Romans. And because of the persecution, the church remained strong. The church in fighting persecution was not fighting by weapons but was fighting by the strength of its faith, of her faith. And that is why the faith remained strong and the church remained one. Many heresies appeared even since the time of the apostles. From the very beginning, we hear even in the books of the New Testament about some of these heresies. St. Paul was fighting against those who wanted to return to Judaism in order for them to be called Christians, to accept circumcision, that the Gentiles would accept circumcision before they can be baptized. That was a heresy. Another heresy uh, that we hear about in the book of Acts is Simonism, related to Simon who wanted to buy his ordination to buy the gift of giving the Holy Spirit with money. We hear about the Nicolaitans, those who followed Nicholas, who was one of the seven deacons that were ordained, according to the book of Acts, were ordained with uh, their head being St. Stephen, the archdeacon. We hear about Nicholas especially and his followers, especially in the book of Revelation, and how this abominable heresy was spreading at the time. Then came Gnosticism. Gnosticism comes from the word gnosis in Greek, which means knowledge. People who were saying that you can arrive to the true faith through knowledge and through logic. You can arrive to God, to knowing God, through your own thinking and meditation. And in order to arrive at uh, their doctrines, they started extrapolating and applying logic and philosophy rather than the matters of faith. And this led to many errors. Most of them had to accept that our Lord Jesus Christ is a lesser God than God, than God the Father, and also did not accept the divinity of the Holy Spirit. The church, however, remained one. The apostles would gather, despite the persecution, they would gather in Jerusalem, as it's written in chapter 15 of the book of Acts, and discuss after praying, and let the Holy Spirit guide them to a decision that will be beneficial to the whole church, thus attacking the heresies from their beginning, from their start, and they would not propagate after that. Now came the era of freedom. As you know, King Constantine, the emperor who united the two Roman empires, east and west, in the beginning of the fourth century, 
issued an edict called the Edict of Milan, allowing the Christians to worship publicly and announcing that the Christian religion is an acceptable, uh, an acceptable religion in the Roman Empire. Then started the, uh, the era of the councils because of the many heresies that existed at that time that were tearing the church apart. But still it remained one. Let's go back to the first century again. Even among the disciples of Christ, even, even among the apostles, there were sometimes differences of opinion that led to fights and disputes. We hear in, uh, in the book of Acts about St. Paul and St. Barnabas who were together in the beginning of the church of Antioch and who went together on the first mission to Asia Minor. They were serving together in an excellent way and gained many people to the church of Christ. But still, because of an issue of accompanying uh, St. Mark or letting St. Mark accompany them uh, to the next trip, they had a fight among them. And that led to a division between them, to a fight that is recorded to us in the book of Acts. But we see even through that dispute, we find some fruit coming out of it, positive fruit for the building and the construction and the evolution of the church. We see Paul taking Silas and going one way while Barnabas taking Mark goes to Cyprus and starting also a mission there. So the church was still expanding despite the differences. St. Mark, after he got a lot of training, of course, through the first trip where he had to cut it short and come back, and after that through serving with his uncle Bar Barnabas, and he also served with St. Paul afterwards, even though St. Paul refused him in the, in, on the second trip, we hear St. Paul asking for him to join him towards the end. St. Mark was the one that God chose to bring the good news to our land of Egypt, the land of the Coptic Church. Since it is a lesson in history, let's talk a little bit of history, let's tell stories. Many of you would know the story, but it's a beautiful one. Let me repeat it. St. Mark, who was born in northern Africa in Cyrene, as a young Jew, had to go back to where the temple is in order to worship. And it was at the time of the public uh, teaching of our Lord Jesus. So he followed him, and he was chosen as one of the seventy. And in his house, actually the house of his mother, Mary, our Lord celebrated the Last Supper and the Eucharist with his disciples. And also it was the house in which the Holy Spirit descended on the apostles on the day of Pentecost. St. Mark, as one of the apostles, wanted very much to come back to his native continent, to Africa, being the only African-born apostle of Christ. The biggest city, the cosmopolitan city of Africa and maybe the whole Mediterranean at that time was a city called Alexandria, which is the capital of Egypt at that time. So that's where he thought he would start and that's where he started the church in Egypt. He came to Alexandria, a city that was very much a Greek city in language because of the many cultures that were in it. And Greek was the language of the world at that time, like English in, in our days. As he entered the city, his sandals were torn. So he, lock, he looked for a, a cobbler 
and uh, he went to a certain Ananias to repair his sandals. As Ananias was repairing the sandals, the needle that he was using pierced his finger. So he cried, Yestheos, which means, oh, the one God. St. Mark, through this call, understood that he has a mission here. And he started teaching Ananias about the one God. And this started the Holy Church of God, of Christ, in the land of Egypt. By this we end this short talk, and we'll come back to this story in the next session, God willing. And glory be to God forever. Amen.